Welcome to our final assembly for the Year 12 class of 2022. Today celebrates the ending of their formal schooling and the beginning of the next chapter in their lives. I'll ask you to please remain seated quietly as we welcome Year 12. Year 12, please be seated. I now invite Mr. Scollard to address Year 12. Good morning, St. Columbus. Good morning, staff and students, and especially um, to you, Year 12, good morning. Last night, um, when we were having dinner at home, we had a little chat around the dinner table, and this is not made up, this is quite real. And um, one of my kids said, what's the most powerful word in the English language. And we had a bit of a chat around the table as to um, what it might be. Initially, someone suggested it might be no, because the word no has got such a strong tone to it. And then we suggested maybe it's not no, but it's the word love, because love is such a powerful emotion. My wife suggested perhaps it was God that was the most powerful word in the world. But we actually came to decide that it was yes. Yes, that is the most powerful and important word that we have in our language. Yes, because yes is the word that lets us take things on. It lets us choose to be people who act justly and it lets us choose to be people who act with love and goodness and kindness. And this morning, as we start your day of graduation, and as we farewell you, we want to applaud you and we want to say thank you for being people who understand the power of yes in our community and in the world. Because as I've worked with you this year, but when I speak to your teachers, they tell me over the last six years, you've been people who frequently said yes. This year, yes to being our senior students and leaders of our community. And in doing so, you've shown us all what it is to be St Columbus people. People who've said yes to sharing your gifts and your talents with us so that you could bring some joy into our, our community and into our lives. People who've said yes to one another in, in great friendship and care for each other. People who've said yes just in understand that life is about joy and fun. And you've got to say yes to get involved and jump in and do that. People who've said yes, it's important to work hard. That if you're going to achieve great things, hard work has to come with that as well. And so this morning, we want to thank you for showing the rest of us what it is to be good people. People who understand the power of yes. Our prayer for you this morning, as you get ready to leave us and head out into the next exciting parts of life, is that you don't forget the power and the importance of yes. Yes to be people who continue to look for opportunities to act with great justice in the world. Yes to be people who um, make good decisions. Yes to be people who accept a God who loves them in their lives. 
because our God is there waiting for us and we just need to say yes. And you do that now, but for the next 60, 70, 80 years, don't forget the power of the yes. And yes to be people who choose to live lives guided by God's love. Because if you remember the importance of that yes, then you'll be okay. And you will go on to achieve wonderful things. So this morning, the staff and students and I here at St Columbus, we want to thank you. Thank you for being people who understand the power of yes, that most important word and most powerful word that we have in our language. Continue to be people who say yes. It's a wonderful thing to do. Thanks for your great leadership, your great contributions to our community, and we wish you a wonderful day today. Thank you, Year 12. I now ask those who've prepared prayers of intercession to come forward. They will be led by Ms Pranjik, who is the leader of wellbeing for Year 12. And the students who are leading us in prayer are siblings, sisters and brothers of our present Year 12. The response to the readings is, Lord, hear our prayer. During their time at St Columbus, Year 12 have grown into fine young adults who are excellent ambassadors for our college values. May Year 12 take the values they have learnt at St Columbus out into the wider world to share the love of Jesus with all those they encounter. We pray to the Lord. As soon as I came to this school, year 12 made me feel comfortable. I had my own brother to look out for me, but the rest of year 12 treated me like my own little sister as well. May our year 12 brothers and sisters always remember their St. Columbus family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. When we were in year six and came to St. Columbus for the open day, the year 10 students who are now our graduating year 12s welcomed us and made us feel like we were already a part of the school community. May the students of Year 12 take their welcoming spirit with them as they move out into the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We have been inspired by the positive examples of leadership demonstrated by our Year 12 students. May these young men and women continue to always lead by example. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. My fondest memory of Year 12 is being able to watch their performances at lunchtime in Nicola. I feel inspired to share my gifts too. May the Year 12 students appreciate the many joyous occasions they have shared at St. Columbus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Year 12 have shown leadership, diligence and compassion throughout their time at St Columbus. We pray that they are blessed in the knowledge that they carry Christ's example wherever they go. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you. Our college captains, Jasmine Cook and Sean Gretsch Axiak, will now address the college community. Good morning everyone. Um, it's pretty surreal to be up here having sat on the other side of the podium so many times, watching cohorts of year 12s and their captains make a speech about how time flies, how they never expect that one day this would happen to them and at long last or perhaps a little quicker than we'd expected, we hear ourselves. I wanted to show this, share this poem with you, uh, a poem from a martial artist Dan Innocento who is uh, both a friend and a teacher and a student to Bruce Lee, which is a very unique relationship I feel many of us share with our teachers here at St. Columbus. The poem goes, we are all climbing different paths 
to the mountain of life. And we've all experienced much hardship and strife. Some paths are short and others are long. Who can say which path is right or wrong? So climb, climb your path true and strong, but respect all other truths for your way for them could be wrong. It would be a miss to relish in this moment without acknowledging the tireless work of the people who have helped us get here today. Through long nights on Google Docs, early mornings in Xavier, dance parties on retreats, our art, woodwork and design teachers staying back late into the night to help us finish our major works. To our teachers, who sacrificed a lot, put up with a lot and put so much time, care and love into our cohort. Who have done so for every year 12 before us and will for many after us, even if we'd like to believe we're a little bit special. I think we speak for all of us when we say we wouldn't be the young adults we are today without your care and support. Wouldn't be on the paths we are now. Our school years here weren't made by fancy ceremonies as much as we do like them. And the flags are pretty cool. But, we, but by the careful and diligent support of people like our groundsmen, our office ladies, the canteen staff, our parents and families, and our brilliant low, Miss Pranchik. Not just on days like this where we can smile and look back at the journey behind us, but on days where the essays were endless, where we counted the minutes to lunch, and when we completed parts of year 10 and 11 on lockdown, our prelims on Zoom. You showed up, so we get to today. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. To everyone, to staff, to the student body, who make this college a place worth growing up in. This path, one worth walking. We are year 12. We were 12 when we got here. We're different now. Hopefully a little bit wiser, at the very least a little bit taller. We're at 18. As class of 2022, we thank you for making a difference in our lives. We hope that we've made a difference in yours. Go make a difference. Thank you, Sean and Jasmine. Congratulations, Year 12. As you leave this assembly for the last time, you go with the love of Christ. And our hope for your future as you go into the world, using your gifts to make it a better place. Would Year 12 please stand? Students, now we are going to congratulate Year 12. I'll ask you to stay seated. and We're going to congratulate them through singing Columba and applauding as they formally leave this assembly and move to their graduation ceremonies. Truth and life, but the hope in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds. 
ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the graduation mass for our year 12s of 2022. It's a great privilege to have you all here with us, and we would just ask that, uh, as per these events, uh, that we try and keep uh, photography during Mass to a minimum. And when I say a minimum, not at all. Okay. <laughs> because during the actual uh, graduation presentation, which will take place after Mass, there'll be lots of opportunities for, uh, for photos then. So we begin our liturgy this morning with the procession of our Year 12s and our uh, celebrating pastor this morning, Father Paul Sliney, assisted by Mr Randall Noni, one of our uh, former teachers at the school. And I'd ask you, if you know it, to join in heartily, as our Year 12s will be, with the, uh, the singing of our uh, processional hymn, 10,000 Reasons.
like to invite Matthew Cassidy to come and lead us in acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge and pay respect to the Darug and Gundagara peoples who are the traditional custodians of this land here in the Blue Mountains. People who have loved and cared for this land for thousands of years. We would also like to pay respect to the elders of the Darug and Gundagara nations, past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal people present. Thank you, Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning and welcome to the graduation of the class of 2022. I'm sure some of you never thought we'd arrive at this date, but we have. And we arrive in joy and happiness at the accomplishments of these young men and women who leave this college and enter the world with knowledge and friendship and support. It is a gracious thing that we do this day. We walk this earth... Uh, maybe my microphone cutting off is a good thing. <laughs> we walk this earth together. And part of the motto of St Columbus is that um, to love justly, to, love, to walk in the presence of God, but to walk gently with God upon this earth that we all share. So th in that which we share, that we journey this earth, we gather together in this place, made holy by prayer, but also by the presence of God's people among us on this day. So as we begin our celebration, let's pause for a moment to reflect on our journeys that have brought us here. And if there's need for forgiveness, let us ask for it of God and one another. If there's need to acknowledge the gifts of love and friendship we have shared, let us thank God and those we love for that gift. And if there's frailty and hurt, let us ask for comfort and hope. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord, we entrust to your hands those who are graduating today. May they praise you in all your creation. Let them experience your own goodness in the hospitality they receive and bring, and bring the good news of salvation to all those they meet. May they be courteous towards all. Grant that they will greet the poor and afflicted with kindness and know how to comfort and help them. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. reading from the prophet Jeremiah. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then we call upon me and come to pray to me. I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our response is, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near us for waters he leads me, he revives my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. 
The Lord is my shepherd, and there is nothing I shall want. You have, a tr- you have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house I shall dwell for the length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You are God's chosen race, his saints. He loves you and you should be clothed in sincere compassion, in kindness and humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive each other as soon as a quarrel begins. The Lord has forgiven you. Now you must do the same. Over all these clothes, to keep them together and complete them, put on love. And may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, because it is for this that you were called together as parts of one body. Always be thankful. Let the message of Christ, in all its richness, find a home with you. Teach each other and advise each other in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God. And never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel procession and remain standing. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt becomes tasteless, what can make it salty again? It is good for nothing, it can be only thrown out to be trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp to put it under a tub. They put it on the lampstand where it shines for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine in the sight of men, so that seeing your good works, they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. amazing at graduation masses or celebrations, there's always someone who gives an address, a speech. And they're usually much older and come from a different world and a different experience that you are facing. And they offer insights, some useful, some not. It is up to you to decide because the choices you make for yourself create the person you become. It is like being here today in prayer. Whenever the church prays, it is praying in the here and now, the reality of who we are and why we are here. So too with you as you journey through life. Your parents, teachers, your friends and the hard work you have put in have given you tools to do that. Tools to make choices that either bring joy and happiness or sorrow or pain, and sometimes all mixed up in the one thing. But you define yourself by the choices you make. And here in the Gospel today, 
the choices we make for life, for love, for forgiveness, are profoundly important. If there is anything that has hurt you in your time here, leave it here in the church. Do not continue to burden yourself by carrying it. If there are friendships that sustained and brought you hope and joy, thank God for the gifts of those people in your life today. And if you're worried or uncertain about the future, you will deal with that as it comes. But this day, choose, choose to rejoice in who you are. Never be afraid to forgive yourself or others. Because forgiveness changes the way we remember. And no one can go through life adding burden or bur and more burdens on ourselves because of frailties or mistakes we have made or hurts that we've received. Do not live in the past because there is no life there. Live in the present and use your skills to create a safe and joyous day where you achieve those things that bring joy to your heart or knowledge to your mind. When I was a young man, uh, ooh, that's a long time ago now. When I was a young man, I used to like the theology of Bernard Lonigan, a, a Canadian Jesuit. And he wrote this when he was a young man. And it's always stayed with me. Be intelligent. Be diligent. Be responsible. Be loving, and if necessary, change. For all living things change. But change guided by the light of the wisdom of your heart and the gentleness of your soul. Change frequently by being aware of what you are capable of doing and accomplishing. Change frequently because friendship has demands upon us. And love has claims to so many things in our lives. Choose those things and you will live well. Choose those things and you will find outlets for your intelligence, your skills, your future. Because it enables us to build on what is life-giving. Do not, do not love. Without it, we, cannot, we are not human. Our humanity emerges out of our ability to love, to be loved and to let others love us, without judgment, without condemnation. And in the heart of the Gospels, Jesus tells people to love one another. There's a story in the, old, in the uh, tradition of the church of St. John, the last, the last of the apostles, and he was an old man about my age at that stage. And he said to, his, to himself, as he would go to the Christian community to celebrate the Eucharist, they said of him, he's old, and he will not be with us much longer. Let's get him up to tell what it was like when Jesus walked amongst us. So they got him up and they said, tell us. And he said, my little children love one another, and went to sit down. They said, no, there's more to it than that. Come up and tell us. So he looked at them and said, my little children love one another. And they got angry. And they said, you're hiding things from me. You were there when Jesus calmed the storm and walked on the water. You were there when Jesus embraced lepers and made them whole. You were there when Jesus called Lazarus from the tomb back to life. Tell us what it was like when Jesus was amongst us. And he replied, my little children love one another. For if you do that, you do all things. If you don't do that, what you do is like dust on the wind. It's blown away. Be loving of yourself and of others. And you will live well. For without love, we arrive at nothing. And to arrive in love, we need to love someone. We need to trust 
another human being with love and wonder to enrich and nourish our lives. Language emerges not from one, but from many. Accomplishment emerges not from one, but from many. All your successes, all your choices for what is right and good emerge out of who you are and the people who help you become who you are. That is the richness of education. That is the call of humanity to love and move forward. And that is why I like Bernard Lonigan when I was young. Now that I'm old, I went back to what he wrote as an old man. And it's different. As he confronted old age, a man of great accomplishment, perhaps one of the most profound minds and reflection on what it means to be a human being of the last century. But as an old man, he said, be intelligent, be diligent, be responsible, <coughs> be reasonable, and be in love. Be in love with someone, or many people, be in love with God, be in love with the wonders of your heart and the gentleness of your souls. And celebrate that in the choices you make that allow you to change and transform and become a richer and more gracious and more loving human being who touches hearts, frees people from pain or loss or hurt, who opens our hearts to welcome rather than exclude, to embrace rather than to judge and condemn, to heal rather than hurt, to hold others in your heart as a sacred place and as a sacred thing. I'm amazed, I really am amazed at times, at how, how people underestimate or undervalue themselves and what they have achieved. Do not do that. For you will, and have in many ways, have already given life to, in friendship and love to others. You have nurtured and cared for others as they have journeyed with you. You have moved human hearts to love, to have shared joy and happiness and hope, to have forgiven and have been forgiven, to heal and to cry to have laughed, to have lost, and to have found. And they are extraordinary achievements at any stage in our life. And most of them you have experienced. You have accomplished much. For ultimately, the journey of our life, please God, is a long one. And there are always parts of ourselves that wander off in dissipation or addiction, or get stuck in resentment and envy and jealousy. Before we know it, we're lost. Brokenness and woundedness are also part of what it means to be human. And how we deal with them, if forgiveness is not involved of ourselves and others, if healing is not offered or asked for, then we never heal. And we go wounded all the days of our life regretting the opportunities to love and to embrace and welcome that we have allowed bitterness or unforgiveness in our hearts to heap upon our shoulders. You are men and women who face a new world with the talents and the skills to transform it into a place of wonder and joy and new discoveries and new hope. You are the men and women who can do that not just in the world, but in your hearts and in your homes. You are the men and women who change the way we think. The men and women who welcome and exclude because judgment and pettiness wearies the heart and tarnishes the soul. You are the men and women who will look for love and in finding it help it to grow and flourish rather than to be bitter and judgmental. Forgive others that we may be forgiven. Love others that we may be loved. 
welcome others, that there may always be a place for us. Bernard Lonigan died a happy man. A man in love with life and knowledge and discovery. A man who in his mind and in his heart searched for those things that illuminate our humanity and allow us to bring light to others, to be a light of the world. Even as it is only in your home where your partners, your children can bask in the warmth of it. Your friends celebrate the wonder of your gift of friendship to them that helps them to be better people. You have accomplished extraordinary things to this point. On this day, you have. And the church and your families and the school acknowledges that. But there are new roads ahead of you. Take them without fear. If you find companionship to walk it, embrace it. And give the world the gift of who you are, in mind and in heart and in soul, that people might find hope and joy and wonder and be encouraged to embrace the opportunities facing us this day and the days to come. So, on this day, the Church prays this for you. May the all-knowing God, who is Lord, show you his ways. May Christ's eternal wisdom teach us the words of truth and life and love. May the Holy Spirit, the blessed light, always enlighten your hearts and your minds, so that you may learn what is right and good, and in your actions carry out what you have learned. May your journey be gracious, may it be surrounded with friends, may you discover depths of your heart and of your knowledge that amaze you. May your life enrich others, may you create new life and nurture it, may you create places that are sacred in our language, places like home and love and friendship. Thank you for what you have brought to St. Columbus over the years. The example that you leave for the years 11 and 10 and 9 and 8 and 7. Thank you for the kindness you treated one another with. Thank you for the forgiveness that you shared with one another, the laughter and the joy. You have accomplished much. May what you accomplish in the future Bring, bring joy to you and wonder to your friends and how more deeply you have grown in knowledge and love and how more generously you have shared it with one another. I'll ask you please to stand as those who are leading us in the prayers of intercession come forward. Lord our God, Father of everlasting goodness, be close to us now and hear the prayers of your faithful people who place their trust in you. Lord, we ask you to bless our world. Please give us the strength to maintain a spirit of hope in these troubling times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the college community be blessed in knowledge that, we, that they have taught us to act justly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, thank you for giving us understanding and patient parents. May our relationship with them strengthen as we leave the security of St. Columbus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, enable us to appreciate the many joyous occasions we have shared at St. Columbus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Francis, our Pope. May church leaders be inspired by him to support, listen to, and understand the diversity of people in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, accept our prayers. 
bind us more closely to you and to one another. In the name of Jesus the Lord. Students now set the table for our common meal. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As in glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith 
may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies, faithful God. For you have given us, Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbour to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please be seated. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race and who always walked with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed are you, your Son, present in our midst, when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you, send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross for the glory of the resurrection, and whom you are seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life, and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son. In his body and blood we have communion. Remember, bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, for bishops, priests and deacons, and the entire people you've made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labour and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, especially those who have died alone, unloved and unmourned. Permit them to rejoice in the light of your face. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, Saint Columba, and all the saints, 
We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. 
of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Here among us is Christ the Lord, the living God, in whom we find life and love now and forever. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. I was getting really lonely up here, the body of Christ. May the Lord bless you with joy and peace, fast in the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. May the Lord bless you with joy and peace, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless you with joy and peace, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May the Lord bless you with joy and peace, by and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
pray. Lord God, your spirit of wisdom fills the earth. Lord, help us with your kindness to make strong through the Eucharist, make that we may put into action the saving mystery we celebrate. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. We now ask a special blessing on these young women and men who are on the threshold of a new phase in their lives and are moving on with our hopes and our prayers. Lord God, your spirit of wisdom fills the earth and teaches us your ways. Look upon these young men and women on this day, the graduation day. Let them enjoy their new ventures and take delight in new discoveries. Help them to persevere in life and give them the desire to do well. Grant that they may be accompanied in their journey by friends to support and nourish them and by the presence of the God to bless and guide them. May they follow Jesus Christ the way, the truth and the life for ever and ever. Amen. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Receiving the light. Each graduating student will receive a candle as a reminder of the light given to them at baptism. Would Ms Musket, Mr Gawthorne and the students distributing candles please come forward. Each candle will be lit from the college candle, the flame ignited each year as we begin our new school year. These young women and men are thus receiving the challenge to be the light of Christ, the voice of forgiveness, the face of compassion, the hands of justice for which our world is insistently longing. I invite each student to come forward and receive the light and then proceed to form the circle of light around the world.
Mrs. Breckenback, please come forward to recite the parents' prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift of our daughters and sons, for our privilege in accompanying them as they grow to adulthood. Lead them to know you, Lord, and themselves, for this is the truest foundation of knowledge. Guide them, we pray, through challenges. Let them learn to stand up in the storm and let them learn compassion for those who fall. Make them young adults whose hearts are clear, whose goals are high, who will reach into the future, yet never forget the past. Deepen their faith so that they will always remember the humility at the heart of true justice, the selflessness of true love and the gentleness that is true spirit. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Students of Year 12, I invite the College Captains to lead you in prayer. God. God. You have, you have given, given us, our parents and teachers, as models of justice, understanding and truth. Help us to strive for justice and peace in our lives as we give witness to your gospel of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May you always act justly so that human hearts may know freedom and forgiveness. May you love tenderly so that human hearts may find joy and peace. May you walk humbly with your God so that all of creation may rejoice in the gentleness of the children of God. And may the Lord bless you with light and joy, grace and strength the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Good afternoon, parents, and welcome to the St Columbus Catholic College Year 12 Award Ceremony for 2022. This is indeed a very special day marked already by a beautiful liturgy celebrated by Father Paul. We now continue with the formality of an award ceremony that recognises the achievements and the efforts of your sons and daughters, our students. I would ask you from the outset of today's proceedings that the formality be respected and applause given only at the times requested. Please be seated. It gives me great pleasure to invite Mr Scollard, our college principal, to speak. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think I've got two small things I'd like to say this morning. First of all, to the families. It's fabulous that you're here with us. This is as much a celebration for you as it is for the young people in front of you. Um, I think I speak a little bit firsthand in that um, later this evening I'll be with my own son who graduates from Year 12 today. And so I understand that this is a great sign for, for you and for all families, in fact, across New South Wales this week as we have this lovely Year 12 graduation space, where we celebrate the fact that the young people we have cared and nurtured and loved finish this first great length of their life's journey with much excitement ahead of them. But as principal at St Columbus, I just want to thank you and acknowledge the fact that we have beautiful young women and men here with us today as our Year 12 graduating class because of the way you've loved them into being from the time they were born. So while we celebrate their great achievements as St Columbus students, we do so with the full knowledge that we do just a little bit of the work. The bulk of it is the work that you have done and that you'll continue to do, as my dear old 88-year-old mother tells me when she lectures me on the way home of an afternoon, well into the future. Thanks for working with us in partnership. Thanks for um, trusting the most precious things you have in your life, your children with us, to care for them and to guide them. So it's great working with you hand in hand in this way. So to the families who are here, thanks for your great work, thanks for the continued work, and thanks for trusting us. To the beautiful young women and, young women and men, the Year 12 class at, at St Columbus this year, if I can speak to you for just a short time. A little bit, of, well, a little bit less than a year ago, in fact, I made my first trip ever up the driveway here at St Columbus that you walk down with all the school community and the Tommy's kids on the sideline cheering you as you made your last trip down the driveway today. It's fair to say that when I arrived and made my way up towards St Columbus, I was a little bit taken aback. I'd not been here before and I didn't quite know what to expect. So when I saw the length of the driveway, magnificent gardens with their spring blossoms blooming and the great sandstone building at the top of the driveway, I was just a little bit impressed. It's a pretty beautiful place. April of this year, during the school holidays, I came back up to um, do a little bit of paperwork and sort my office out a bit. And as I stepped outside, I realised there was something missing. There was something lacking. And it was you. It was the students of St Columbus. It was the staff. It was the people who had been making St Columbus a magnificent place of faith and learning since the seminarians first arrived here over 100 years ago, and then the school students in 1979. And I reflect on that with you this morning because I would hope that after your 13 years of schooling and your six years at St Columbus, that while you'll have spent many, many hours in English and maths and science and humanities, loads of time playing handball on the playground, way too much time queued up at the canteen, as much as those things are really important, I would hope that there'd be one really significant lesson you'd take away from your time at St Columbus, which is the most important of the lessons. And that is that um, buildings and gardens and places of beauty are really important. They're good for us. They provide somewhere for us to celebrate and to learn and to be together. But the most important thing in our lives are the people and the relationships that we will cultivate with those people around us. 
Father Paul spoke really beautifully before about the importance of those relationships and the love in those relationships. And that's what I'd hope that as St Columbus students you would always remember. In 10 or 20 years' time, when you've um, finished uni or your trade and you're well into your career, and some of you, no doubt, will be sitting in big corner offices in the city, I hope that some of you will be teachers working here at St Columbus. And if I'm due to retire, which I hope I will be in 20 years' time, hopefully some of you will be queuing up for my job. But when you do, when you're in your corner office or when you're a school principal or whatever it is you might decide to do, don't get carried away by how important the label on your door is or the title on the bottom of your email or the place where you work or live. Please remember that if you're going to be a St Columbus student, then to act justly is to do justice to those people in your lives by loving them well, in the same way that your parents have loved you well. Please remember that to walk humbly with your God is to walk humbly with those people around you and to recognise God in them and in yourselves. And please remember that to love tenderly is to take care of those people so very, very well. If you can remember those lessons, then you'll be fine and you will have a life lived with great joy. I won't promise you with no sadness along the way because that doesn't happen, but the joy will outweigh the sadness and you will have good, full, rich relationships. So this afternoon, Year 12, we congratulate you on your graduation from high school. We're very, very proud of the young people that you are. We wish you wonderful lives filled with success and much joy. And our prayer for you as you go forward from St Columbus will be that you continue to remember to be those people of other people. And not just the people that you know, but also those people in the world that you don't know personally, but that you know about. Because they need your love as well. They're the people who you will change the world for as you venture forward. So congratulations. Well done today. We look forward to seeing you in the years ahead and hearing of your many successes. But well done this morning. Thanks, you 12. We will now present the Year 12 graduating class of 2022 with their college portfolios. Each student will receive a portfolio which contains a certificate of graduation from the college, Year 12 final reports and academic achievement certificates for students who were ranked second or third place in each subject. I invite Ms Pranjik, Leader of Wellbeing Year 12, to the lectern. I call upon the homeroom teachers of 12.1, Mr Badman and homeroom teacher of Aspect, Ms Campbell, to assist Mr Scollard in presenting the Year 12 portfolios. It is with pleasure that I present to you the students from 12.1. Please hold your applause until the final student has been presented. James Batinsky. Certificate of Graduation. Lauren Beaton, Certificate of Graduation. Paige Bradshaw, Certificate of Graduation. Taylor Brickwood Adams, Certificate of Graduation. Neve Canning, Third in Design and Technology. Summer Daly, Certificate of Graduation. Holly Durs, Certificate of Graduation. Rachel Doughty, Third in Personal Development, Health and Physical Education. Mm -hmm. 
Lola Edmondson, third in Community and Family Studies. Joshua Harrison, second in Mathematics Extension 2. Harish Holmes, Certificate of Graduation. Ashley Hurley, Certificate of Graduation. Liam Kerr, third in Chemistry, third in Mathematics Extension 1. David McMaster, Certificate of Graduation. Xavier Nissen, Certificate of Graduation. Xavier Plowman, Certificate of Graduation. Andy Rogers, third in Modern History. Lachlan Smith, Certificate of Graduation. Finn Spain, Certificate of Graduation. Jack Thomas, <coughs> Certificate of Graduation. Ryan Woods, Certificate of Graduation. Please put your hands together for 12 points. Thank you, Mr. Badman and Ms. Campbell. I would now like to call upon the homeroom teacher of 12.2, Mr. Carr, to assist Mr. Scollard in presenting the Year 12 portfolios. It is with pleasure that I present to you the students from 12.2. Please hold your applause until the final student has been presented. Jasmine Abel, Certificate of Graduation. Ruby Bentvelsen, <laughs> Second in English, Extension 1. Isabel Blacklock, Certificate of Graduation. Ashley Campbell, Certificate of Graduation. Jasmine Cook, Second in English Advanced, Second in English Extension 1, Third in Visual Arts. Emma Craig, Certificate of Graduation. Alyssa Gardner, Certificate of Graduation. Mia Garraway, Third in Community and Family Studies. Alec Gleason, Certificate of Graduation. Sophia Hammond, Third in English Extension 2, 
third in legal studies, second in modern history, third in studies of religion one. Nicholas Harrison, certificate of graduation. Scarlett Hay, certificate of graduation. Adam Holder, second in software design and development. Pang Ying Ho, second certificate of graduation. Dylan Lestel Braid, certificate of graduation. Bridget Lloyd Williams, Certificate of Graduation. Riley Middlebrook, Certificate of Graduation. Madeline Moore, Certificate of Graduation. Jack O'Connor, Certificate of Graduation. Martine Perez Eaton, Certificate of Graduation. Joshua Phillips, Certificate of Graduation. Nathan Press, Certificate of Graduation. Thomas Rizzuti, Certificate of Graduation. Henry Rukowski, Third in English Studies. Ellie Savage, Certificate of Graduation. Matthew Sekulik, Certificate of Graduation. Nicholas Weinman, Certificate of Graduation. Please put your hands together for the students of Chelsea. Thank you, Mr. Carr. I would now like to call upon Homeroom Teacher of 12.3 to present and assist Mr. Scholar in presenting the Year 12 portfolios. It is with pleasure that I present to you the students of 12.3. Please hold your applause until the final student has been presented. Olivia Bullis, Certificate of Graduation. Haig Buckingham, Second in Music. Caitlin Clements, Second in Business Studies, Third in Mathematics Study Standard 2. Ethan Dempsey, third in industrial technology, timber products and furniture technologies. Patrick Dixon, certificate of graduation.
Marius Edmonds, second in Mathematic Extension 1, third in Physics. Mason Evans, Certificate of Graduation. Audrey Gauchi, third in English Standard, third in Visual Arts. Camille Gitchu, Certificate of Graduation. Charlotte Harris, second in History Extension, second in Music. Ethan Jordan, Certificate of Graduation. <coughs> Rowan Kelly, Certificate of Graduation. Chloe Kitching, third in Mathematics Standard 1. Amber Love, Certificate of Graduation. Max Renenberg, Certificate of Graduation. Oliver Rizzuti, second in English Standard, second in Legal Studies. Daniel Salisbury, Certificate of Graduation. Josephine Santi, Society and Culture, third. Annie Smith, Certificate of Graduation. Adam Sitka, Second in Music. Ryan Trent, Certificate of Graduation. Freya Van Rossum, third in Agriculture. Gemma Ward, Certificate of Graduation. Talia Woolley, Certificate of Graduation. Please put your hands together for the students of Perkins. Thank you, Ms. Holyfield. I would now like to call upon the homeroom teacher of 12.4, Ms. Kuzak to assist Mr. Scollard in presenting the Year 12 portfolios. It is with pleasure that I present to you students from 12.4. Please hold your applause until the final student has been presented. Cornelius Appel, Certificate of Graduation. Sebastian Boucher, second in Industrial Technology, Timber Products and Furniture Technologies, second in Physics. Benjamin Boyer, Certificate of Graduation. Keegan Breakenback, third in History Extension. Amity Bus, Certificate of Graduation. Sarah Darby, third in Biology, second in Personal Development, Health and Physical Education, second in Studies of Religion, too. Nathan Della Libra, Certificate of Graduation.
Eli Junja, third in studies of religion two. Kaya Forward, certificate of graduation. Caitlin Graham, certificate of graduation. Kiara Hill, second in society and culture, second in studies in Catholic thought. Eamon Marshall, certificate of graduation. Holly McElveen, third in biology. Stephanie Michaleris, certificate of graduation. Lachlan Monaco, Certificate of Graduation. Danilo Nunes, Certificate of Graduation. Isabella Asinga Minta, Certificate of Graduation. Alec Popovic Catanzarinti, Certificate of Graduation. Amy Statton, Certificate of Graduation. Demi Vasalo, Certificate of Graduation. Lauren Walford, second in economics. Molly Walker, certificate of graduation. Hamish Walker Sorkins, certificate of graduation. Flynn Weston, Certificate of Graduation. William Zamet, Certificate of Graduation. Please put your hands together for the students of Georgia. Thank you, Ms. Kuzak. I would now like to call upon the homeroom teacher of 12.5, Ms Black, to assist Mr Scollard in presenting the Year 12 portfolios. It is with pleasure that I present to you the students from 12.5. Please hold your applause until the final student has been presented. Bailey Atwell, Certificate of Graduation. Ayla Bogg, Certificate of Graduation. Oliver Burke, Certificate of Graduation. <coughs> Brendan Butfield, Certificate of Graduation. Matthew Cassidy, Certificate of Graduation. Lily Foster, Second in English Studies. Curtis Glassford, second in design and technology. Sean Gretsch Axiak, third in agriculture.
Clay Griffiths, second in Mathematics Standard 1. Rebecca Hand, second, sorry, Certificate of Graduation. Emma Hennessy, Certificate of Graduation. Shane Hunt, Certificate of Graduation. Amelia Konstantinov, second in Chemistry, second in Mathematics Standard 2. Ella Laurent, Certificate of Graduation. Nicholas Likely, Certificate of Graduation. Arid McCuster Monk, second in Agriculture. Elena McDonald, second in Community and Family Studies, second in Visual Arts. Rose Mile, second in Biology, third in English Advanced, third in Mathematics Advanced, second in Studies of Religion 1. Madison Moon, Certificate of Graduation. <coughs> Nurses Meradian, third in Business Studies. Sean O'Rourdon, Certificate of Graduation. Vaughan Philpott, Certificate of Graduation. Talia Rust, Second in Ancient History, Second in English Extension 2, Third in Legal Studies, Third in Studies in Catholic Thought. Sion Shan, Certificate of Graduation. Connor Taylor, Certificate of Graduation. Callum Wormsley, Certificate of Graduation. Emily Willis, Third in Ancient History. Alicia Zagarella, Certificate of Graduation. Please put your hands together for the students. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Black. invite Ms Pranjik, Leader of Wellbeing for Year 12, to speak. Good afternoon, Mr Philip Scollard, our College Principal, staff, families and our Year 12 graduates 2022. Mother Teresa once said, it's not about how much you do, but how much love you put into what you do that counts. Throughout your journey, you have been supported and loved by your parents, guardians, grandparents, aunts, 
uncles and siblings. They have been there every step of the way and they are so very proud of your achievements and your accomplishments, great and small. You stand before them today as young adults celebrating your graduation. Today, we thank your parents for their constant support, enduring love, invaluable wisdom and strong faith. To all your teachers, homeroom and classroom, I say thank you. You have challenged students to not just be better students, but better people. Whether it has been through a kind word or a selfless act, you have taught them well, provided them with everything they need to succeed. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, and the ability to put a smile on their faces even when they have been tired or unmotivated. It is this love that you have shown when preparing Year 12 for the HSC that will also prepare them for what comes next. And to Year 12, 2022. Your sense of humour, your care, compassion, devotion, kindness, during the good times and challenging moments are quality traits that you have shown all year, not just to each other, but also to all of our members of our community. You have been loyal to each other in this ever-changing world and demonstrated such resilience and strength. You have prayed for each other. You have supported each other. You have created friendships that will be everlasting. Recently, you have made wonderful memories at our retreat, St. Columbus Day, under the Spotlight Production, the Creative Arts and TAS exhibition. These will be shared moments forever. Your love for one another is evident by the way that you work together, you pray together, and most of all, how you laugh together. So year 12, make no mistake, you can go anywhere you choose. Be proud and never ever doubt yourself. So much is about to change for you as you begin to take and make a whole new series of decisions based on your hopes and dreams. I am confident in the priceless knowledge, the unforgettable memories, lifelong connections that you have obtained through your time here at St Columbus. This will lead you to make positive difference to our world. I am so very proud of all of you. You leave here today with a strong spiritual legacy. This will support you through life's challenges. An awareness of the nature and the importance of true justice, an ability to love with genuine tenderness, and the knowledge that as you walk in different directions into the future, each of you will not walk alone, but humbly with your God. Congratulations again, Year 12. It has been a true pleasure to work with you. Thank you. I now invite Mr Scollard, our college principal, and Mr, Mike, Mil Mr Michael Milgate, our head of learning, <laughs> thank you, to come forward for the presentation of the Academic Excellence Awards for 2022. The following awards are for students who have achieved excellence in their vocational education and training course. These students will be awarded an Academic Excellence Medallion and Certificate. Ella Laurent for hospitality. Audrey Gauchi, hospitality. Arid McCusker Monk, primary industries. Connor Taylor, fitness. And Joshua Phillips, information and digital technology. The following awards are for those students who have been ranked in first place in their courses based on their HSC assessment. These students will be awarded an Academic Excellence Medallion and Certificate. The following students have achieved first place in one of their courses. I'd ask you to please hold your applause until the last student is presented with their award. Bailey Atwell, first in English Studies. Rachel Doughty, first in design and technology. <coughs> Mark
Marius Edmonds, first in Mathematics Extension 2. Curtis Glassford, first in Industrial Technology, Timber Products and Furniture Technologies. Sophia Hammond, first in History Extension. Liam Kerr, first in Physics. Bridget Lloyd Williams, first in English Studies. Eamon Marshall, first in Mathematics Standard 1. <coughs> Elena MacDonald, first in Mathematics Standard 2. Oliver Rizzuti, first in Business Studies. Talia Rust, first in Visual Arts. Lauren Walford, first in Society and Culture. Please put your hands together for these students. The following students have achieved first place in two of their courses. Again, please hold your applause until the last student is presented with their award. Benjamin Boyer, first in music and first in entertainment. <laughs> Jasmine Cook, first in legal studies and first in studies in Catholic thought. Charlotte Harris, first in ancient history and first in modern history. Holly McElveen, first in Community and Family Studies and first in Personal Development, Health and Physical Education. Thomas Rizzuti, first in English Standard and first in Studies of Religion too. Please put your hands together for these. <laughs> The following student has achieved first place in three of their courses. First in Agriculture, first in English Extension 1 and first in English Extension 2. Please congratulate Rose Mile. student has achieved first place in seven of a possible seven of their courses. For first place in biology and chemistry, English advanced and mathematics advanced, mathematics extension one, science extension and studies of religion one, please put your hands together. <laughs> Congratulations to all of those students.
Outstanding Academic Effort Awards are presented to students who have displayed an unfailing and rigorous commitment to study across all their courses throughout Year 12. These students received a grade of consistently in all learning practices in all subjects in both their semester one and two reports. Please hold your applause until the last student is presented with their award. In 2022, the Outstanding Academic Effort Awards are presented to the following students. Paige Bradshaw. Sarah Darby. Ellie Junja. Audrey Gauchi. Sophia Hammond. Amelia Konstantinov. Rose Mile. Stephanie Michaleris. Adam Sipka. Talia Rust. Pang Ying Ko. Gemma Ward. And Emily Willis. Please put your hands together for those. I now invite our college captains, Jasmine Cook and Sean Gretschaksiak, to present the college captain's address. Friends, families, teachers, our fellow Year 12s, welcome. I'm sure you agree it's surreal, but undoubtedly wonderful to be gathered here today. This introduction was written up in the presentation space one morning about a week ago because Xavier was closed for the prelims. Fitting, I think, because it was written by the backdrop of constant and familiar chatter stranded by many of you guys. How many words is a sigma? Is a six marker again? <laughs> People were asking. Uh, was there LP for English? Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, can you believe we only have a week to go? What colour is your super formal? You going to the gym this afternoon? <laughs> it was just us, talking, laughing, propping each other up, keeping each other going. We've shared notes, homework, mental breakdowns. Google Docs at odd hours of the evening and at the morning as well. <laughs> Carnivals, retreats, we're all very lucky. There's going to be a lot of well-deserved, heartfelt thank yous in this speech. First one goes to our peers, because what would we have done without each other? We're surrounded by people who have shaped our lives so far, and we extend to all of them our most sincere of thanks. Teachers who are kind and persistent thoughtful and caring, more so than we could ever have asked for. To all the people, seen and unseen, who made our school experience seamless and that much more enjoyable. Our incredible low, Miss Pranjik, who guided us through this crazy year. Friends who changed and grew, but looked out for each other as we changed and grew. Fell apart, 
got back together. Families, born and chosen, who stood by us, even when we didn't remember to thank them. On days but we hid who cared. Our peers, who kept pushing, kept things exciting, and carried us through these moments of celebration on days that we never believed it was going to happen. But here we are. I don't think any of us know what our future holds, and I'd be lying if I said we did. <laughs> After all these months, I have very little idea at all for some of us. For some of us, it might be you know, TAFE or uni or work, but these are broad labels that don't offer many answers, when in comparison, for the last six years, we've known that lunch starts at 12.50, afternoon study is on Wednesday and Thursday in Xavier, and 3.05 means freedom. But there's a quote from this horror science fiction podcast I listen to and love, and I find myself repeating it more and more these days. It goes, the past is gone and cannot harm you anymore, though the future is fast coming for you. It always flinches first and settles in as a gentle present. I don't know, I don't pretend to know what happens next. I don't think, and I'm sure many of you would agree with me here today, that today would actually come. <laughs> but here we are. The future seems to be fast coming for us. The past of childhood, of security, of familiarity seems to be fading more and more with each passing day. But I hope that the future flinches before we do. I hope that these foundations make you strong and able to weather it. I hope that if and when we fade and shift away from the people and relationships we have right now sitting in those chairs at 18, that we are certain that they meant something, that we were enough because we gave it everything, good, bad, or indifferent. We gave it our all. I'm so proud of who we are, and I'm excited to see who we become. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jasmine and Sean. It's fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, we now are moving on to the presentation of the College Major Awards. So firstly, I'll invite uh, Mrs Mulhall to present the Sporting Blue Award and Outstanding Sports Person Award. The Sporting Blue Award is for students who represent the college through selection into a state or national team as a result of competing at the New South Wales Combined Catholic College level. This award is also presented to students who represent a sport at a state or national level without being part of the New South Wales CCC pathway. The recipient of the Outstanding Purse, uh, Sports Person Award is a student who has represented the college in more than one sport at a house, representative, diocesan or higher level of competition. They have been involved in a range of college sporting activities and above else displayed an attitude of mind which exhibits a willingness to give to the team their sporting house and the college before self-achievement and acknowledges the exceptional talent and commitment to sport. Congratulations to the following student who's, who has received a Sporting Blue Award for PD SSSC Swimming and is the recipient of the Outstanding Sports Person Award for 2022. Haig Buckingham. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Mulhall. I'll now invite uh, Mrs. Foray to present the cultural award. The cultural award is presented to the student who has made a significant contribution to the creative and performing arts life of the college in areas such as visual arts, captivate, showcase, drama, talk fest, music, singing, and or dancing. The recipient of the Cultural Award for 2022 is Charlotte Harris. Well done, Charlotte. 
And thank you, Ms. Farrell. I'll now invite uh, Mr. Michael Milgate, the Head of Learning, to present the Long Tan Leadership and Teamwork Award. The Australian Defence Force Long Tan Youth Leadership and Teamwork Award uh, recognises and celebrates qualities such as leadership, teamwork, respect for others, doing one's best and mateship as displayed by young people. The Australian Defence Force places great importance on these qualities and in fact the service men and women of this nation are also expected to demonstrate these qualities every day. The Long Tan Award is presented to the student who demonstrates leadership and teamwork uh, within both the college and the broader community and displays strong values such as doing one's best, respect for others and mateship values considered integral to the ADF and Australian society. The recipient of the Australian Defence Force Long Tan Youth Leadership and Teamwork Award for 2022 is Curtis Glassford. Thank you, Mr. Milgate. I'll now invite Mr. Sattler, Head of Religious Education and Mission, to present the Bishop of Parramatta Award for Student Excellence and the Act Justly Award. The annual Bishop of Parramatta Award for Student Excellence, which recognises the religious and academic achievement of senior students across the Diocese of Parramatta, was presented at St. Patrick's Cathedral on the 24th of August. So the following is the citation that was read for this student on that evening. As our college captain, Sean exemplifies the gospel-inspired service essential to true Christian leadership. Sean's priorities are informed by prayer. His proclamation of scripture and leadership in college liturgies have regularly enlivened the prayer life of the community. His authority as an inspirer of student action flows from his integrity as a man of reflective and practical faith. He has devoted himself to animating social justice projects, including the Jesuit Social Services Food Drives and Project Compassion. Sean is an academically gifted student who supports his peers' academic progress and has contributed with vitality to a variety of college projects. The recipient of the uh, Bishop of Parramatta Award for Student Excellence for 2022, Sean Gretsch Axia. <laughs> the Act Justly Award is for social justice. The recipient of the Act Justly Award has made an outstanding contribution to the promotion of gospel based justice in the college and the broader community. They have committed themselves to leading our community through awareness raising and practical service for the sake of those most marginalised in our society. This year the college has decided to honour two students with this award. So the recipients of the Act Justly Award for 2022 are Sophia Hammond and Paige Bradshaw. Thank you, Mr. Sattler. I'd now like to invite Mr. Scollard to present the Iona and the Christian Leadership Awards. The Iona Award. The recipient of this prestigious award is a true all-rounder, energetic in striving for academic, sporting and cultural excellence, and is an empowering example to the others of the call to make the most of our God-given gifts for the good of the college community. The recipient of the Iona Award for 2022 is Jasmine Cook. <laughs> and 
and the Christian Leadership Award. The recipient of the Christian Leadership Award is an exemplary leader who lives out our Christian faith through their compassion, their witness to God's love, liturgical spirit and their humble service of our community. The recipients of this award are people of action, dedicated and passionate to follow their faith through their strong commitment to their own faith formation and faith leadership. And this year the college has decided to honour two students with this award. And the recipients of the Christian Leadership Award for 2022 are Sean Gretschak-Tiak and Elena MacDonald. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our Year 12 graduation ceremony for 2022. On behalf of Mr. Scollard, uh, Mr. Scollard and all the college staff, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for being here today and your presence is wonderful for our students. To end the ceremony, I'd like Year 12 to stand and for us all to congratulate them as they leave the, uh, the church. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here to be part of such a wonderful celebration for our students and your, and your children. It's been a fantastic day. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon with them.